of unlocking things, let's unlock our knowledge on the pagan holidays. Speaking of key, here's some key notes about pagan holidays. Aw, snap. That's right. We're coming up with all the freshness here. Speaking of opening doors, (laughs) let's open our hearts and minds to an old-time classic. And this one is by History.com. I didn't see author name. So it's just by history.com. And uh, so this one is the first pagan holiday coming up. And uh, let's see, my wife gave me some little like footnotes on this before we start. Let me see. My wife packed me a lunchbox. Yeah, that's right. Brought it in. So, okay. So for Wiccans, the Sabbath is a time to give thanks for the growing daylight as the god is developing and strengthening his power. The goddess, recovering from giving birth to the god at Yule, Okay. It's beginning once again to step into the maiden role. Wow. We're talking about the origins of Imbok, which apparently is after is Yule. That, is that how it's pronounced? I believe so, yeah. Imbok. How do you, why do you say that? Is Imbok or Imbolk? Oh, Imbolk. Could be Imbolk. I M B O L C. Yeah. Imbolk. So, this one is apparently after Yule and right before the, the spring. Uh, anyways, so yeah, it's after Yule. It's like the in-between period between the winter and spring. And this one is apparently about fertility. Mm-hmm. But uh, without further ado, cool. okay, Ambalk is a pagan holiday celebrated from February 1st through sundown February 2nd. Based on a Celtic tradition, Ambalk was meant to mark the halfway point between winter solstice and the spring equinox. That's what the, it's called. Okay. In and Neolithic Ireland. Neolithic Ireland and Scotland. The holiday is celebrated by Wiccans and other practitioners of neo-pagan or pagan-influenced religions. Ambulk is one of several pre-Christian holidays Pre- highlighting Christian. some aspect of winter and sunlight and herald, heralding the change of the season. We're talking pre, pre-Jesus. pre So the last thing that we were talking about that had some kind of religious... Uh, background was mm-hmm. the uh, Ifrits and the uh, what was the other thing? The Dajin. That's right. That yeah. was part of the corn, yeah. I think. Yeah. So Which this is, is part of pagan and Wiccan uh, religious thing. There's a lot of different folklore very, from different religious very old. religions in the. Yeah. So this one's apparently older than than Christ. Apparently. Okay. okay. So how about you give us the origins, Sir Goose? Let me tell you the origins of Imbolc. I believe it's called. The celebration of Imbolc dates back to the pre-Christian era in the British Isles. Let's do a star swipe and a fade, and you're going to have that sound that goes... You're asking a lot of things. <laughs> no, I'm doing it right now. It's oh, fine. Okay. Uh, the earliest mentions of Imbolc in our literature date back to the 10th century. What is that? What is the 10th century? Is that the 1000? Or is that 900? Uh, it's 900, right? 900 something. Yeah, Poet- something B.C. 900 BC, 990 BC. Yeah, I'll right give there. this a quick Google. You keep going. Okay, I think I'm right. Poetry from that time relates to the holiday to eyes milk. I being E W E, which is the animal, or is that you? You or I? Either way, the milk of that animal, with the implication of purification. So the 10th century compi- comprises from the years of 1000 BC to 901 BC. Knew it. I called okay. it. I called it. It's been speculated that this stems from the breeding cycle of sheep and the beginning of lactation. The holiday was traditionally aligned with the first day of spring and the idea of birth. Makes sense because there was a lot of shepherds that would have their flocks of sheep back then. Talk about So Brigid the Goddess. Embolic celebrations took the form of festival in honor of the pagan goddess Brigid. Or Brigid. Brigid. (laughs) Who get like Bridget? Okay, who was invoked in fertility rites and oversaw poetry, crafts, and prophecy? She was a rapper. Oh. Little Brigid, little Brig, <laughs> little Brig, was worshipped by the Philly, a class of poets and historians among the Celts of ancient Ireland and Britain. Little Brig was considered one of the most powerful Celtic gods, the daughter of Dagda. The oldest god in the Celtic pantheon, Tutha du Danan. Danan. Ooh, fancy. She had two sisters, also named Little Brig, though it's speculated that these sisters are meant to symbolize different aspects of the same goddess. We got Little Brig, we got Little B, and we got Little BB. Bridget, 
with a T. <laughs> a little BG. A three guy. Little battleground. So little brig appears in the saga Kath Meg Turret. The Liba Gaba Eren. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> and Libor Gabala Eren. A purported history of Ireland collected from various poems and texts in the 10th century. Miss Babria's birth says she was born with a flame in her head. There you go. And drank the milk of a mystical cow from the spirit world. Little Brig is credited with the very first key, a traditional welling for the dead practiced at funerals by Irish and Scottish women. Keening? Oh, I guess it's like, I don't know. Like just, it's just a type of mourning? I guess. Maybe it's, it's a like type a, of screaming? Maybe it's a song? I guess so. Maybe you do a rap about the person? Now let me tell you about Ancient and Bullock. Okay. Or in bulk. So this is ancient. Ancient. Pretty ancient. In okay. pre-Christian times. So okay. BC. Let's talk about this. Right, let's see in what bulk happens. observance began the night before February 1st. Mm-hmm. Celebrants prepared for for a visit. A visit? I said visit for some reason. I was too focused on little B. <laughs> prepared for a visit from Brigid, or little B, into their homes by crafting an effigy of a goddess, or the goddess, from bundles of oats and rushes. Sounds huh. difficult. The effigy was placed in a dress and put in a basket overnight. The day of Embolic was celebrated by burning lamps and lighting bonfires in tribute to little B. <gasps> little B. Brig is right. Saint Brig. So you gotta put respect on the name. Oh, Saint Brig. Over the centuries, Brig was adopted into Christianity as Saint Brig. She was so cool, they brought her in. <laughs> One of the Ireland's three patron saints. The Catholic Church claims Saint Brig. So anytime you're ever named a saint, they have to have performed at least one miracle. I see. So Saint Brig was a historical person. Well, accounts of her life written by monks dating back to the 8th century. Brigid, or Bridget, as the patron saint of the Irish nuns, newborns, midwives, dairy maids, and cattle. So not much changed, really. Whether or not she existed, these stories contain aspects in common with the details of the pagan goddess and illustrate the transitions from pagan to Christian worship. Like the goddess Brigid, Saint Brigid is associated with milk and fire. Born in Ireland around 453 AD, Saint Brigid was the daughter of a slave and a chieftain who was celebrated at an early age for agricultural knowledge. So what you're telling me is the chief had himself a slave yeah, and had who a child. was her mother. Oh, okay, that, is, that doesn't sound like a very good life. Very, very good childhood. Yeah, but she, she rose up becoming an agricultural genius. Well, I mean, that's amazing. And she was associated with milk and fire. <laughs> Very different things, but I sure. think she just had a like a strong will, strong Passion. personality. That's why they call it said that she had a flame in her head. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. What? Okay. With no interest in Marion, Bridget's goal was to create a monastery in Kildare or Kildare, supposedly, the former site of a shrine to the Celtic goddess of the same name. Bridget lived her entire life there. Whole life, never not living oh my there. God. Oh my God. She was renowned for her charity to the poor, and stories abound about her healing powers. That's a strange sentence to me, but okay. Saint Bridget was a friend of Saint Patrick. You know, Saint Patrick's Patrick. Day. No, get a drink. <laughs> different, different Patrick. Oh, okay. Not that Patrick. I see. The Saint Patrick, whose preaching set her on a course at an early age, and she became Ireland's first nun. Which to me. Were there nuns already? Or is it just Ireland's first nun? Uh, I like to pretend that she's the very first nun in the world. I don't know. St. Bridget is said to have died in 524 AD. After death of Jesus, the remains of her skull and hand are claimed to be in possession of the churches in Portugal. Now, how did she get there? She was in Ireland. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's, mm, I don't know about that. Because she lives her whole this life. She needs a deep dive. She lives her whole life in Ireland, and then when she dies, Portugal comes over and steals her head and hand. Well, there were many wars where they took different things. Oh, okay, I guess so. In the 12th century, legend holds that the nuns of Kildare attended to a fire built in St. Brigid's honor. The fire had burned for 500 years and produced no ash, and only women were allowed in proximity to the fire. So, like, did somebody set, like, a coal mine on fire or something? I mean, I guess it went out by the time of a thousand years, yeah. but I would like to know. I think there's a, actually a town in the States 
where they accidentally caused the fire in a coal mine that still burns to this day. It was a uh, it was a set piece for the original Silent Hill. They made it around that town. Oh. Oh, yeah. Because it was abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The celebration of St. Brigitte's Day on February 1st was put into place by the church to replace M. Bullock. Oh. So, I guess, Gowdery Bullock, now it's British Day. On her feast day, an effigy of St. Brigitte of Kildare is traditionally washed in the ocean and surrounded by candles to dry, and stalks of wheat are transformed into cross talismans known as Brigid Crosses. Modern Embolk. The modern celebration of Embolk is considered a low-key, loose and sometimes private affair concerned with the reconnecting with nature. Since it's a climate-specific holiday, some followers of the Wicca religion adjust their celebration of it correspond with the date more appropriate to the coming of spring where they live. Others embrace the symbolism of the holiday and keep to the February 1st celebration. The goddess Brigid is central to the celebration for modern Wiccas and the tradition of the original Celtic festival Wiccan groups that worship Brigid might include fire rituals to Embolk. Traditions of both the pagan celebration of Embolk and the Christian celebration of St. Brigid's Day can be found in modern Embolk celebration. Celebrants sometimes make a Brigid cross out of reeds as well as Brigid corn, doll, or F. Take a shot every time I said Wiccas. <laughs> or like Wicca. Three, three times? I'd say take a shot every time we say Brigid. <laughs> oh, God. You, you would die <laughs> of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> so what, what we got here is basically it's almost the exact same. Brigid mm. Day and, and Ikemol and Bill Mork. I want to say by a little bit of research I did, there's like seven or maybe nine different eight. Celtic holidays. At least eight. Uh, so I was thinking like maybe we'll do like we'll cover like each one that's coming up mm. as well as like, you know, other kind of uh, folklore. But yeah, no. uh, thank you so much for all the support on YouTube and all the support on uh, SoundCloud and BitChute. We're starting to get more subscribers coming in. We appreciate y'all. And yeah, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. I guess, I guess so. Until the new year. <laughs> what, what are you thinking about next week? What are we going to be doing next week? Oh, it's a spotlight on me this time. That's right. Oh, I no. twisted it around, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing next week? What are we doing? Hmm. I had to do all this research already on my own, but let me figure it out. Hey, I was it out. in the background <laughs> looking over. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You know, I think it's really cool about... Well, no, I think I was like an owl there for a second. Cool. Cool. So you got all those different tribes, you know, like on some of those islands that men can't get to. They're, they're like cut off from the world. I mean, are you talking about the Guardian Isle? Or uh, Guardian, what's it called, the Guardian Isle? No, um, the people are called Guardians. Which one was that one where that Christian dude tried to go take the Bible there and then he was killed like shortly after, even though he was warned many times not to go there? I'm not sure which one that is. All I know <laughs> is the one where if a helicopter gets close, they'll throw spears at it. I don't, well, anyways, I'd like to cover that. Okay. Like, we'll look at those kind of tribes. That'd be interesting. Anyways, if you have any kind of folklore that you might know of in your area that you think would be cool for us to cover... Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let us know. Please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you again like, next week. Like, subscribe, and share, and repost. Let me read and off the remix list. And redo, and, and then retweet. And then copy the link and post it in your family's <laughs> Facebook page. And download it on a USB. <laughs> and download it on your library. Upload computers. it as a virus to your government's info banks. Uh, we don't condone that. <laughs> if you did that, that'd be. We awesome, do not claim any responsibility no, for you turning our podcast into a virus. That's right. However, if you do, I'll give you a wink and a smile. <laughs> we won't bail you out, but we'll talk about you in the news. Probably. Okay. I'll let you later. Bye. Bye.